one's right in front of me, but I haven't started on it yet. Uh, yeah, bro, I have not started my bracket yet, but uh, I'll probably do it tomorrow or after this, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, Everybody got a bracket up in front of them, so we actually have something to talk about. Give me a second to pull mine up. I've got mine. Right. Do you have like an actual paper bracket? It is, bro. What are you doing? I gotta have paperwork, man. Bro, this, this, this isn't the '90s anymore, bro. It's, it's online, bro. You you making it I, difficult for yourself? No, I like it this way, man. I'm old school. Yeah, yeah, you are. You were rocking a hot top fade since you were born. I get it. <laughs> Uh, that was, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, man. <laughs> man, this bracket though, man, this is this is gonna be a tough one, my guy. Bro, I feel <laughs> like it's gonna be a tough one, but it shouldn't be a tough one because I feel like if everything goes well, we all know who's gonna win. But uh, you know, it's, it's always something. That's why they call it March Madness. It is madness. Make your racket just to watch it burn by the end of Sunday. Right? Yeah. You just you just cry a little bit. Because it's always... Cause, um, <clears throat> I, I'm a nerd, so I just had to do some research before. And I was... Uh, actually, I, I'm lying. I just stole it from Gary Vee. But he said 34% of 12s beat the 5. And I always know a 12 beats a 5. But 34% in the last 5 years. So you, you got to at least pick one. Such. Uh, yeah. All right. Y'all ready to get this started? Yeah, definitely me because I'm getting tired. Yeah, I know how you feel, bro. I'm getting old too. Uh, let's go ahead and get this started. Alvin, kick us off. Hey, hold up. Let me get my charger real quick. All right. Alvin, don't kick us off because we're dictated by people who do not have the stuff. To, okay, you froze. Yeah. <laughs> That's the Calvin I know. Right. Oh, you're back. Okay. All right. Everybody in here again? Yes, sir. So we were you recording from the thing? I'm guessing so to record. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, but yes, yeah, since everybody is here, uh, let's go ahead and get started with the introductions. Philip. I don't think he's in here. Philip is irresponsible, so go ahead and kick us off, Calvin. What's up, y'all? I'm Calvin McGowan, and I'm actually kind of excited about this. No other reason than I'm apparently the only one who's already done their bragging. So, yeah. It's uh, Levi Washington here, straight from Kansas City. Uh, I'm excited for this uh, this year's March Madness, and um, I haven't made my bracket yet. Uh, Philip, if you're in here, go ahead. Oh, I'm in here to tell you I can't be in here. Oh, okay. Uh, goodbye. I'm, I'm grading, no, I'm grading papers right now. That's why. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Peace. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, I am Alan Pettigrew Jr. Because I have to put that down there for legal reasons now. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. We This is the Traveling Hoopers podcast. Let's go ahead and get started. I got a question for y'all. All right. Did anyone else peep how unbalanced this bracket, like the reasons really are? There's like, it seems like there's like three top five teams. And let me, let me see which one I'm looking at. Duke has it relatively easy. They don't really, they're not really going to match up with anyone that's extremely tough for them until what, pretty much the final four if Michigan State makes it all the way through. Uh, that's a, uh, Michigan State would be Elite Eight, I think. Elite Eight? Yeah, they would meet them in the Elite Eight. Yeah, that, that's still light work. Uh, like the Kansas' bracket, the Midwest, with North Carolina, Kansas, uh, sneaky Iowa State, 
in Kentucky, that's the dog fight every single day. I feel bad for the boys. Oh, yeah. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, yeah that's... It's like they don't want Kansas to win the uh, championship. That's just... Because I don't think Kansas can beat Kentucky. And I don't think Kansas can beat North Carolina either. And they might actually have their hands full of all... All right, go ahead, Levi. What were you saying about Kansas? They got a tough road, man. Like like you were saying, they don't want Kansas to win because, I mean, they got a tough road. Like, even if they win the first one, there's a possibility they got to go against Auburn. And then if they make it to the finals, most likely North Carolina might be in there if they make it. But, you know, I'm not sure. Midwest is a tough one. Yeah. As a Kansas fan, I usually always have Kansas at least to the Sweet 16. This year, very shaky, especially if uh, LaDrill Vic is not back. And then, of course, Kansas doesn't have um, a quote-unquote elite big man. Is Azubuki still injured? Yeah, Azubuki still out. Oh, man. What's up? What, does Lawson not count as an elite big man, or, like, am I missing something? Uh, for, I don't I don't know what it is, but for a Kansas scheme to actually work, they need a big, just... Like, it's kind of more of a traditional seven, big, like... Yeah, like, like, you need a Cole Aldridge, Jeff Witte... Uh, Landon, Lucas Landon, just big seven footer who's just kind of there and a little bit athletic enough to change and block some shots. Yeah, and, absolutely, basically. Exactly, and that's not Deidre Lawson. That's fair. He'll get you 20, but he's not getting you three, four blocks. Okay, yeah, I'll give you that. I, I really think that's the whole reason why Kansas has struggled this year. Like, if you if you always, like last year, DeSosa was a really big part of, like, the second unit that made them go because he was basically as Mbuki but extremely mobile. And yeah. without either one of them, they're nothing but guards, and they don't have an elite guard like they have for, like, the past five years. So it's all kind of just up in the air, bro. Okay. Yeah, yeah that, that's true. That's definitely true. So I got a question for y'all. Who y'all got winning it? Who y'all got winning it? Um, so let me preface this by saying that I, I'm honestly not crazy about my bracket, but <laughs> Duke, I have Duke winning it. At, it feels too easy. Like, there's no way this actually happens in real life. My Duke, boy. Hmm? I was complimenting you. Uh, but, yeah, that's why I have winning it. Yeah, bro, I agree with you. I agree with you from a bracket standpoint, just because it looks like they're going to steamroll through. Because, let's say, but one thing I do really want to see, I want to see UCF beat VCU, because UCF has Taco Fall. I'm pretty sure all of you have watched YouTube enough to see his uh, mixtape. Seven foot six, still some wit skinny. Zion is going to put that boy on a poster. Wait for it. <laughs> you think so? Oh, man. That, no, that's going to happen. That's you play dude. UCF realistically. Yeah, um, Duke taking it to the house. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I really see Duke playing... I really want Duke to play you know? so I can see that um, Zion poster for Taco Fall, bro. When that <laughs> happens, I, I will be the happiest human on earth, mainly because I called it, but also because I will be watching it at work, and I will be screaming as Zion puts a hole in that young man's chest. Actually, is this on, this is on a Sunday. I'm not going to work. <laughs> I'm just call off. Yep, I remember do. I'm gonna be a terrible employee. Uh, you work on Sunday, so. Yeah, Damn, I you. Yeah, I'm still stupid. I got two jobs in, until the end of April, but um, yeah. Oh man. No, nah, so it sounds like everybody has Duke winning this. 
Yeah, I have. Yeah, I definitely. I'm not proud of it, but yeah, I definitely got Duke. You know, that's my team. But you know, if teams want to beat Duke, they're gonna have to put them in the zone. They're gonna have to force them to shoot because they have too much talent to hold them one on one. I mean, there's no way you can hold. So, you know, it has to come down to coaching and player personnel. Definitely. <clears throat> if if with this team. Um, Coach K does not get past this week 16. Can we say he's slightly, he's been slightly overrated for like the past like two years? Because all of his teams have quote unquote underperformed for like two or three seasons. Yeah. I wouldn't say he's underestimated. I mean, overestimated. I mean, I'd have to go with no because like the thing about March Madness is at the end of the day, it's just like it's one it's single elimination. All you have to do is have one bad game. And I don't think in it's not coach K already has rings and he's already won plenty. So nah, he's not overrated even though he's not necessarily getting to the championship game every year. Yeah. If that's if that's the benchmark pretty much everybody is overrated. Who's Except Greg Popovich. Hmm? Except Greg Popovich. Yeah, but he doesn't coach college ball. True. Did y'all see that stat on the Spurs? Uh, what stat? In the 22 seasons that Greg Popovich has been either a coach or just with the team, mm-hmm. they have had a losing record for 65 days. 65? Wow. That's three... That's barely three days a year where they have a worse win total than five. That's absolutely crazy. That's mighty impressive. And I think like the next team was like a thousand days. So life is ridiculous, bro. Yeah, he's completely smashing those stats. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Yeah, he'd go. He'd go. But uh Let's get back to this bracket. So mm-hmm. who like who is y'all underdog to win this? Like, you know, last year they had Loyola of Chicago. Um like well, who's who's that Cinderella for y'all? Um so all right, let me preface this by saying I don't feel confident in most of the higher seeds or like the big the bigger conference teams mm-hmm. because a lot of them this season have had some have had points where they played very poorly like it, they're pretty much almost everybody's kind of up and down there are a few exceptions duke um virginia M- north carolina i guess but most of them it, it's just like i'm i don't necessarily have confidence but if as far as the underdog i went with um, it'd probably be Belmont, but I, even with them, I didn't have them. I, I had them at the Sweet 16 and then. Yeah, you liked Belmont at, uh, at the beginning of the season, didn't you? Um, mm-mm. Well, I haven't paid much attention. Uh, let's see, who was I talking about in the season? Uh, I don't even remember. Yeah, I know there was one smaller school that you was like, mm. Was it Fort Foreman? Something oh, like that. Foreman was, yeah, he, they were ranked at one point. They didn't get in. Nah. They're, they're in the same conference as um what Murray State in was it like Campbell or someone? Belmont, I think. Hmm. I think it was Belmont. Yeah, Ohio Valley. Yeah. 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 You're right. You're right. Guys, Belmont. Belmont managed to get in that large, and Murray State ran, uh, got the auto bid. Yeah. What about you, Levi? Who who are you feeling? Oh, uh, there's a possibility. Uh, maybe Syracuse, based off the personnel that they have. They have uh, they have a nice little bench, and then they have a a nice little lineup that defends and can possibly. You know, outmatch 
well, not outmatch, but overwhelm, uh, you know, somebody coming from the other side of the bracket. For example, if it was North Carolina, I feel like they can match up pretty well with them, too, is also with the personnel that they had. <clears throat> but, okay, but do you think Syracuse could get past Gonzaga? I mean, there's a possibility. I mean, there's a possibility. I mean, Gonzaga, last year, they were supposed to get to the Final Four. I mean, they were supposed to get to the championship because they were at the same rank last year, basically. They were top five, at least, and they failed. They <laughs> failed. Levi, so. basically what you're saying is if three of if the three of us strap up shoes right now, there's a snowball chance in hell that we can beat Gonzaga. And that's what you're saying for Syracuse, basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't think no. That's not basically what I'm saying. I'm saying Syracuse has the personnel. Like I said, they can defend. They have a bench, and that's key coming into this March Madness. And I'm saying Gonzaga. They fail me every year, so I can't bet my money on them. That's what I'm saying. I can't put my money in their jar because I don't trust them. You know. But here's the thing. Every year, everybody fails except for one team. That is true. Yeah, that's true. The winner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. And who is Gonzaga lost to this worse than Syracuse outside of St. Mary's? Dear God. <laughs> mm. I, look, I got a theory. I think Gonzaga let them win. So they <laughs> can get, so they could get somebody else in the, uh, from their conference in. <laughs> I, personally, I personally think every top team, like the Big 12, if Kansas, were like, let's say for the next 10, year, 10 years, Kansas was good enough to win the Big 12 tournament every single year, mm-hmm. but for recruiting reasons, and they wanted to say they have the best uh, conference, they purposely lose the championship game so another team can get in and gives them like a better record overall, makes them look better. I'd be okay with that. Yeah. But I, I could easily see Gonzaga game and like, let the little guy get one. <laughs> St. Mary's, yeah, because they got the automatic bid. Let me see what they got. They are playing, who was it? It was, hold on. They're playing Villanova. Nova. And they have a puncher's chance against Nova. E, they do. It, no, I, I don't like Nova as far as bracketing goes. Bro, I don't like Nova because I can't name anybody on that team right now, bro. Yeah. And then at the beginning of the year, they were a wreck, and I'm assuming they picked it back up. But they, They've they been up and down all season, basically. Yeah. Like, really? They can play like one of the best teams in the country, and they can play like garbage. Yeah. So Say, where, mm-hmm, what were you saying? I'm just like, so it's just like the thing with the bracket with them. It's like, okay, which one is going to show up? Yeah. And I don't think about it. St. Mary's has some uh, shocker potential. If they get past uh, Villanova, they're going to have to work their butt off against uh, Purdue because Carson Edwards is hungry this year. But uh, another, another puncher's chance. And then it just looks like he kind of – if Tennessee doesn't make it, it, it's going to be fairly up in the air. And how dare they let Two Pace uh, play against Tennessee in the first round? That's not going to be fair for the boys. Yeah. <laughs> School's name is Colgate. The joke is funny. Y'all some haters. It's amusing. It, it, it's 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 amusing. It, it's not it's not going to get like it, I'm not about to cry laughing from it. At least but. At least let me get a chuckle. Um, Chuck. I hate you. <laughs> I'm drinking water. You're over here trying to make jokes. Hey, like, okay. All right. Let me let me test to see if I'm just generally, all right, if this is crazy for me. Granted, there are various points where I feel like there could be upsets, and this is probably, I don't know, maybe it's just one of them things where I picked the worst possible one. But I actually think, but I actually have Purdue losing to the Old Dominion. Whoa. Um, why? Because basically it boils down to this. Purdue uh, doesn't have anybody outside of Edwards. Edwards is not efficient. Um, 
Old Dominion has two 16-point-per-game scores. You slow the – who are both more efficient than him. You slow the game down. You let him get his. Don't let any – like, you let him get his. You run your stuff. You probably come out with the W. What are they defenders like that? That would that would just seems like you're you're asking for like a team effort on the defensive end. Like, what do you have to back that up from Old Dominion that says, yeah, they can do it? Because I have little to no faith in Old Dominion. This is the first <laughs> part about them all season, bro. Yeah. Well, a lot of these teams is the first time you've heard about them all season. I heard about Two Paste earlier in the season. Colgate, gotcha. When? Hmm? I'm like, I haven't heard about them all season. Well, when you hear about a school named Colgate, it catches your eye. Okay, I'm lying. But, but it's really good. I just wanted to bring up Two Paste again. Yeah. <laughs> There's the chop I was looking for. Say it again. I said, there's the chop I was looking for. Thank you. Chuck, chuck. I hate this guy. But, um, oh, no, Granted, I didn't pick it. I kind of feel like UC Irvine might be able to get Kansas State. I still have Kansas State winning. Yeah. But. I don't know, man. Have, did you see Kansas State in the Big 12 tournament? Yeah, I didn't. That's, that's a team, bro. Yeah, they're they're solid. They're solid this year. I feel as a Kansas basketball fan, I feel incredibly insulted that they're at the same seed as Kansas. But that's just the personal that's bias. Kansas, well, I can't be like it's Kansas' own fault. They 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 just had terrible luck this year. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, everything that could go wrong did go wrong for them. Very much. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, Marquette or Murray State? Uh, I got to go Marquette. That's just the – they they seem to be a deeper team. Mm-hmm. Um, I get Murray State does have another guard who's putting in a little bit of work. But – um. If John Morant isn't giving you almost thirty this game, I I really don't I really don't see how they pull it out because uh, Mark because Mark Marcus Howard is averaging I think like twenty five or close close to that a game, right? And he's not really that much of a defender, but neither is John Morant. So I can literally see them both going at it and it being a really good game. Um, John Morant puts like 28 on them. Josh Howard puts like 22. But um, Murray State bigs can't really do anything against Marquette. And they lose by like five points. It'd be a good game. It's just not. I don't really I don't really see them coming out of coming out of this one with it. Okay. Uh, I picked Murray State. But it's not even like, oh, I have a whole bunch of stuff to back it up. Realistically, Marquette probably wins. But it is I feel like it is possible that Moran um, wills them to one, basically. But, you know, it, it stopped there in any case. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so, how do y'all feel about Kentucky? Um, this is Kentucky Tom. Well, the same way I think about the stocks. You know, they're up <laughs> and they're down. You know, they're inconsistent. They're all most of the time. Usually, a young team like this year, they have a young team, but they do have some talent this year. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not confident in the talent this year about Kentucky. Well, the last past couple of years, maybe when De'Aaron Fox was here, but they still lost. So, you know, you never know. Yeah, the way I see it, this this Kentucky team, I, I got to disagree with Levi a little bit. This Kentucky team is one of the older teams that they've had in a while. Yeah. Just because uh, a lot of the guys opted to stay another year, and they need to. 
And uh, this this might be this crop of t- talent minus maybe Keldon Johnson and um, PJ Washington might be like when they had the Harrison twins and they stayed like two three years. Yeah, I remember they, that. Two, um, I can see that because Nick Richards is. He kind of looked like a guy cold caveman out there. He he has no idea what he's doing most of the time, but he's super athletic. Um, <laughs> and that just reminds me of Willie Cauley Stein. Like, it's going to take a minute for him to figure out what he's supposed to do. Um, Ashton Hagens, I really like him, but um, he seems like he's just out athleting everybody when it comes to like his defensive presence. Um, and I think that is probably going to run out around in like the. Cause I'm really trying to see who, who they might match up against. Like if they have to play Iowa State, I think Iowa State will get that W. Iowa State has like three guards that are not not exactly draft uh, draft ready, but actually, I think two two out of three of them are draft ready, but. Uh, We'll all give you buckets at the college game. And uh, Kentucky's on the up and up like they usually are around this time. But Mm -hmm. I have no faith because John Calipari. Mm. Yeah. Man, they won the championship in what? And I notice. Yeah, it's been been a couple years. I mean, several years, actually. (laughs) <laughs> since he won the championship. And that was with Anthony Davis. Was it the Anthony Davis year? Yes, it was. Yeah. See? Yeah, that was a minute ago. What is that, like five first-round draft picks that year? The one and the two? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was supposed to win. <laughs> Nobody was scoring on uh, MKG back then. Oh, yeah. That's when he was getting... Double double in blocks and rebounds and all that type of stuff. Crazy. Oh yeah. But I noticed Kentucky when they go against these uh these high ranking schools, they tend to just fall, like, like collapse, completely collapse. They collapsed against Tennessee. Absolutely no no production, <laughs> no production. The score was eighty six to sixty nine. So. You know, but they they also beat them. Wait, was this in the tournament? No, no, no. This this is about okay, a month. I'm ago. like they split during the regular season. Yeah, and I think they both blew each other out at their respective home. So yeah, that said, there was that embarrassment against <laughs> Duke at the beginning of the season. Yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> That was, that was crazy. I didn't expect them to go out like that. <clears throat> hey, I was, because, you know, I don't do nothing anyway. I was watching ESPN all day today, and I believe Jay Williams was saying he could see Kentucky beating Duke in the uh, in the championship game. That's where he got his bracket ass, and I'm assuming he's made, like, three others with his real ideas because um, I still do not see Kentucky. Um, baby, I'm holding on to that first game. I do not see Kentucky beating them boys. They got way too much confidence, and they got a Zion. Well, um, I do. I think it's it would like they they match them up. Is it gonna happen? Probably not. But I can kind of, I can kind of see the case. One, Kentucky has gotten a lot better than they were when like it, in that first game. Also, they're going to remember that first game. And I feel like coming out just wanting to stomp on your opponent because they embarrass you, you in your first college game means something. Is it going to mean enough for the win is a much better question. And it's worth noting, outside of Gonzaga, nobody is beating a full-strength dude. Yeah, bro. When I tell you I have no faith whatsoever... Because it's, it's not like they got outskilled. If they got outskilled, I would say, yeah, definitely. It's not like they just got outskilled. 
if they did, I would be like, yeah, Kentucky definitely has a chance because they did get better. They got out athlete, mm-hmm. which doesn't really change that much during the uh, season. Zion is still Zion. P.J. Washington cannot hold him. Reed Travis cannot hold him. Nick Richards might as well be a matador. He's going to get blown past so bad. And then you also got R.J. Barrett. The only person that can really mash up with him is Keldon Johnson. And unless Keldon Johnson is filling in that night, and I'm pretty sure we get a a Cam Reddish sighting, if that ever becomes a thing. I really hope it does. I hope he goes for like six, uh, six six for six from three point at the three point line during the tournament, just because that would be nice considering he's been so quiet. But uh, nah, that that I think they they get washed if they uh, if Kentucky has to play them, bro. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. I mean. I mean, they're, they're, they sometimes don't get production from the guards. I'm just looking at these stats. And there's some nights. Now, I see P.J. PJ Washington, he's constantly showing up. But sometimes Harrow and Johnson, they don't show up. And that can, that, that can be scary coming into this uh, March Madness. But if they show up, they can be effective, man. Those guys show up. Man, and the, man, the perimeter players, bro, they're, they're important. They're very important. And, um, man, what was I trying to say? <laughs> I'm tired, bro. My fault. I lost my train of thought. I lost my train of thought, my guy. <clears throat> you can go, bro. But um, question for you guys. Mm-hmm. Who is the highest rated seed that you're surprised that they got that, uh, that seed in? Um, let me look right quick. Uh, since I put y'all on the hot seat, I'll go first. Mm-hmm. It's Houston, bro. Houston? I was thinking that too. Did you say Houston? Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I was looking, I was like, Houston? Yeah, Houston's I've been a top 10 team for a minute now, though. I know, yeah. I know, I know they've been rocking all season, but, um, I haven't heard anything like extremely impressive that they've done this year to warrant them getting a, a three seed. This well, is not I mean, like, if you basically spend most of the season as a top ten team, a top three like being in a three seed isn't that outlandish. No, I, I completely get that, but it's um. Like, who did you play for for us to really believe that you're as good as you think you are, as we think you are? That's um, basically saying they, they're definitely a, at least the top 12 team in the country. And I'm trying to pull up their schedule to see, like, who's the most impressive. With what I have in front of me, mm-hmm. as far as games they played, um, they beat LSU. They beat Cincinnati twice, split with UCF, um, beat Utah State by 10, split with Temple. They beat uh, Connecticut, didn't they? Uh, They probably did, but Connecticut's also not in the tournament. My little thing is probably not going to list you if you didn't make the tournament. Yeah, they sure didn't. It's actually surprising this year. So, really, their impressive wins are two times at Cincinnati and one at LSU. Because I, I wouldn't uh, necessarily say UCF is impressive. Okay, why wouldn't you say UCF is impressive? Um, I'm a little bit of a hater, clearly. UCF isn't um, much of a purebred. I have this another team that's been – Pretty quiet, and outside of Taco Fall, I don't know who else they have. Like, there's there's no one big name that's like oh, okay, or there's no like one stat that pops out to me that that shows me that 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 is an elite team. 
and it really sounds like that happened early in the season, mm-hmm. which could have just been a hiccup on UCF's part. But uh, that's just me. But I've been wrong before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, oh yeah, he's like, who are you surprised by? Uh, give me a second. What about you, Levi? I was thinking Houston, but uh, just to say another team, I would say maybe Buffalo coming from the West. Hasn't Buffalo been ranked most of the season? Yeah. But that's the same thing for Houston. Like we just said about Houston, they've been... Like, okay, <clears throat> just for y'all, all right, my own clarity sake. Like, why why is it to y'all so important that there is some, I don't know, fantastic thing that just sticks out about a team? Why can't a team just be good? You can be good, but you also got to have, like, some type of calling card. Like, um, like Kansas's best teams, there was a guy that could get you a bucket at any given time, whether it was – um. Sorry, I got to do this. Andrew Wiggins. Andrew Wiggins can get you a bucket pretty much any time because he could just out-athlete anybody. You got Frank Mason, who's definitely a bucket. Uh, the year after that, uh, I can't remember his name, but as far as I'm concerned, that was Frank Mason's little brother. Um, if you, what were you saying? Go ahead. You go ahead. Yeah, and if you even go back further... Um, Looking at Brandon Rush. So there's there's always been some type of player on one of those major teams that can go get you a bucket at any given time. Or there's something that your team just does better than everybody else. Mm-hmm. And none of those teams seem to have that. There's like no one system that just like screams, oh, okay, this makes sense. You can get a bucket at any time just because it is one singular play. Okay. Yeah, like all the teams that I have faith in, like I sadly have faith in Gonzaga this year because they have uh, three borderline pro, well, two definite pros that are going in the first round and one borderline guy. Um, who else? Who else is another person that I'm I'm really feeling this year. North Carolina. They got uh, they got two guys. They got Nasir Little. They got Kobe White. Uh, Luke May, who's just going to be a really good college player. Tennessee, that front court is dangerous. Uh, I'm shaky on Virginia. Uh, there's a lot of really good guys on that team, but... None that really seem elite. Like, yeah. the thing I was saying about Virginia, though, is that this is um, their coach's best, like, most efficient offense. And, like, with that, like, since he's been there with that team. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and of course, defense, they're always good de- defensively. Um,. But I, I actually kind of have, like, I kind of have faith in Virginia. If for no other reason than because a lot of them boys still remember last year. And they're, I just, I'm, I'm just assuming people being people, that they're dead set on not having anything resembling that happen again. So, so they're just going to power through off that, basically. But, you know. Yeah, bro, I agree with you. They're going to come up with some fire. And that fire is going to die on, like, the Sweet 16, bro. Think Like, who do you think they're going to play in the Sweet 16? Uh, let me look at the bracket. Um, either, either K-State. Yeah, I, I got my money on K-State. 
Uh, you really don't think they'd be able to get K-State? Mm. It's not somebody... Yeah, I, I don't I don't think they will, bro. Because K-State is another team that plays pretty fast. And um, not sure if they're going to hold it up enough, hold it down enough to keep that up. Mm-hmm. But hey, it's March. I've been wrong before. I usually am. Aren't we all? Oh, yeah. I think I actually have Virginia in the um, final four. Cause yeah. in, like, the thing, and as far as the lead eight, I have, them, I, I have them playing Tennessee. I like Tennessee. I like Tennessee a lot. But they have, like so many of the teams that we we're talking about, have lost games they shouldn't lose. And at some point, that is going to bite them. And if it doesn't, and if it doesn't bite them before, then it'll bite them against Virginia. I feel like. I can see that. I can definitely see that. All right. Got a question for y'all. What's your dream scenario in this situation? Like what is what is the craziest thing that you can come up with with happening where your work team or an unexpected team with it? Wait, repeat that. Uh, like what is what is your dream scenario scenario during this? Like how does uh a team like Colgate or your favorite team in this bracket uh how do they win the championship? Like, what has to happen? Um, or just my favorite, like, the team I like the most. Yeah. Or whatever. So, um, let's see. All right, so for this, I'm going to go with Tennessee is the team I, I actually really like. Um... So basically, they have to be consistent, and they it, they just need to not make boneheaded decisions. Like if, if the threes aren't falling for you, Schofield, just stop taking them and just bully people like you're perfectly capable of doing. Um, let's see what has. They also would have to get past Virginia. And then and then they and then be a rematch with Kentucky almost certainly. That would be fun to watch. Um, basically, from after Colgate, they they just need to consistently play good basketball, and they probably get away with and they, and they probably if nothing else get to the cha- championship game or the Final Four. At which point. If they get to the championship game, they'll probably meet Duke. And I have no idea what happens then. They probably lose, though. Or, you know, Zion gets hurt early, and then it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. and his shoe flies off or something. Rips his shoe in half. <sighs> Going yeah. off of a dunk. <laughs> oh, did you? So apparently part of the reason he was out so long was that Nike went and... Basically, had shoes made specifically for him. Where they made, like they made that man a super shoe. <laughs> <laughs> they made, they had Edna Mode come out of. Uh, it made that boy a super shoe. That's hilarious. Uh, I'm assuming y'all not laughing because y'all know who Edna Mode is. That is sad. Incredible. Oh wait, never mind. Now I remember. Incredibles, guys. Come on. It's like, Chuck, I, I know now. It was how Chuck, you, were, you were pronouncing it. Um, uh, how do y'all feel about Warford? I don't. <laughs> wow. The feeling is neutral. Yeah. Um, I don't know enough about them to be like, yes or no. Mm-hmm. Um. I heard they had a couple. They had a pretty good season, but um, 
unless you can maybe you can enlighten me. I haven't heard anything about their resume that's just like, oh yeah, that's a team that could make a run. Uh, I don't even know about making a run. I'm right. I'm starting with, do you think they could get Seton Hall? Um, but for what it's worth, they shoot a collective 42% from deep. And they have a player named McGee who puts up 20 points a game, uh, takes 4.6 threes. Uh, I don't remember what the six were. Uh, Hmm? What's what's his first name? Because I remember hearing Uh, about that. Fletcher McGee. His name's Fletcher McGee. Yeah. If Fletcher McGee gets hot, I could see him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I don't know why I thought Warford was like a 14 seed or something. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're not getting past Kentucky. Tell you that. They might give Kentucky a scare like early in the second half when Fletcher McGee goes for like three back to back threes, gets that little lead, and then Kentucky's like, nah, B, we don't lose this early. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you say? Like, you'll, you won't find an argument for me. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, my bracket, and change it to Warford. Because <laughs> it's like, the reason I had Seton Hall picked was largely because I actually want Warford to win. And it's just trying to combat. It's like part of how I do my bracket is attempting to combat my own biases and such. It's mm-hmm. like, I don't, it's like I know I want this team to win or I like this team. So, you know, try not, try not to let your bias get in the way of trying to have a good bracket. Never mind the fact it's going to get lit on fire here in a couple days anyway. But it's nice to think. Um, oh, what about Nevada? Shaky. Um, I, of course, love the Twins. Uh, but um, I don't have a lot of faith in them. I watched them over the weekend. I, I I could really see them losing to uh to Florida. Okay. No, I'm not just saying that as like a being in the moment. I could really see them losing to Florida because uh Florida was kicking some butt earlier last week. They looked really good. Nevada seemed shaky at. Every single position that does not have a Martin twin there. Mm -hmm. And that leaves all of the positions except one. So, yeah, we just don't have to see about that one. I I could really have Florida going over them and, and then just be really upset when they actually win and disappoint me. Okay. Uh, like, hmm. oh, how do okay? Um, how do you feel about Michigan? Because I feel like cause you talk about y'all mentioned kind of feeling like they're not having a whole lot of faith in teams. Don't necessarily seem to have just something that sticks out. And I and I personally feel like Michigan is kind of a team that doesn't have anything that really sticks out. They're just a good basketball team. You can correct me if I'm wrong. So how do you feel about them? Um, they have the talent to get it done. They have uh, realistically they got three dudes that are looking at uh some serious role player to NBA type potential. Like um, their freshman, I cannot pronounce his name. Um, I like him. He's mm-hmm. uh, he's averaging like sixteen points. Like he he's putting up numbers. Uh, let me look up their roster right now. But yeah, they're they're they might not be the best in the world, but they damn sure do enough to be like, yeah, that team can, yeah, Ignis Brog. Broads, 
Brazadikis? Brazadikis or something like that? Yeah, Brazadikis. Let's, let's go with that. Mm-hmm. He's showing out. Charles Matthews is a pro. Jordan Poole is a pro. Um, and then the rest of the team just clicks. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, you got three pro guys and a bunch of really good role players at the college level. Mm-hmm. It's hard for me to turn my nose up at them, especially because you you got you realistically have three guys that can get you a bucket any time they get the option. Jordan Poole was pretty high on people's draft boards last year. Oh, yeah. Come back. Charles Matthews. Um, the fact that he got a, con- a offer from Kentucky says a lot. I, re- I remember when he decided to go there, and I was like, he's never want to play. He never played. And then kind of shows out for Michigan for a little bit. And then uh, this new guy. Who came out of pretty much nowhere, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, got 10, 3 plus 10 point per game scores. Mm-hmm. And a hell of a squad. I like them. I like them a lot, Tex. Mm-hmm. Shut up. Uh, By the uh- way, for anybody listening, and if you made it this far, congratulations. We're doing this at like 9 o'clock at night, and we're old on the inside. It's 10 o'clock here. Uh, I think it's 10 o'clock everywhere. We all in the central time zone. And Yeah, uh, yeah bro, that's my bad time. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's definitely my bad time. <laughs> <laughs> my eyes getting heavy, bro. Yeah. I gotta wake up super early tomorrow. But, um, man. Well, thank you for uh, staying up with us, man. Uh, well, it's n- no problem, man. We should be wrapping this up pretty soon. All right, say no more. Yeah. Anything else you guys want to talk about? Uh, uh, okay. Um, it, so, just looking at, you know, the bracket and everything, who do you think? Is I don't know the lowest seed or what have you that has a realistic shot at getting to the to the uh, final four or the championship game. How low how low of a seed are we talking about? The lowest seed that you the, the whatever team the lowest seed you think would could pull could realistically pull it off. Okay. Would you consider Iowa State? Yeah. Yeah. Levi, okay. you gotta get out of my head, bro. Cause I was uh I was thinking I was thinking Iowa State, bro. I've been, <laughs> watching, I've been watching them play all this past week. Uh, Merrill Shayok, uh Horton, here's a who. Um them boys are balling. His oh, yeah. name's really not Horton Here's a Who, but I am not gonna say all of his name because he has like three of them, bro. Uh yeah, let me see if I can pull them up. Yeah, but yeah, oh, uh, that that three headed monster, yeah, Lindell Wigginson, who was uh going up and down draft boards all year, Merrill Shayok, uh, who reminds me so much of Michael Pietras. Um, they don't have Horton here's who we're Horton here's okay, and then uh Taylor Horton Tucker. Yeah, um, I will be completely honest with you. I don't know a better three guard unit in in the tournament. I can't think of one. Um, normally, uh, yes, I am a Kansas fan. Normally, I can say this about uh, Kansas, but I cannot think of a better three guard front out here, even with a. Uh, with Michigan, who is barely on there, because uh, this is technically more of a three. Yeah. But, yeah, I there's too many guys to lock down. There's too much talent to really hone in on. 
Like you, you really got to pick your poison. You're gonna, you're gonna stop the dude that can give you twenty. You're gonna stop the dude that can give you eighteen, or you want to stop the dude that can give you fifteen. It's really up to you. And sorry. Yeah, they do have a solid three guard lineup. Um, and they usually do have a solid, you know, perimeter. They usually have uh, solid perimeter players in Iowa State. They're pretty good at recruiting perimeter players out there for some reason. Dude, what the? <laughs> yeah. What about you? Uh... So as I'm looking at this, and granted, this might be a slightly more arbitrary choice because of the one game of theirs I actually caught this year. Um, but I would make the argument that Louisville, as far as Lois when had a halfway realistic shot, I'd probably go with Louisville. He's seven seed. Literally, most of that is off the fact. Granted, like when they played Duke, granted they lost, but they outplayed them. Most of that game, they Duke didn't win that game so much as LSU. I mean, not LSU. Uh, Louisville lost it. Um, if they play like if they play like they did against Duke, they could probably be just about anybody. But I'm not sure they could necessarily maintain that. But that's if I'm say going with my lowest seed, it's probably them. Levi, you going with uh, you going with Iowa State too? Yeah, I'm gonna stick with Iowa State. All right. That's crazy. I was in your head though, and then yeah, I was I in the in the Houston one too though. <laughs> yeah, I don't appreciate it, bro. <laughs> That's funny. This is why I like doing the uh, the show with uh, Philip here too, because uh, we never agree on anything outside of the Lakers suck. I, I, yeah, I don't think he agrees with anything. He always has a rebuttal against everything. <laughs> yeah. That's a good thing to have. So I hope you listen to this. We are talking about you. Cause... Yes, very badly, Mr. Yeah. Teacher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Any guy, anything you guys want to plug before we get up out of here? I just want to send my prayers to the Lakers <laughs> and LeBron and LeBron James's uh, uh, house. It might get graffitied up, but I want to send my prayers to the Lakers and LeBron James, man. Are, are they like officially out the playoff picture now? Yeah, most likely. Yeah, it's it's bad, man. It's they haven't won a game in a while, consistently at least. Mm. I mean, I, I I don't know what LeBron was expecting to happen. Yeah, me either. I, I, I'm assuming he was really feeling himself. Well, I don't know, because I feel like he knew that they weren't going to be that good. Because if you notice, he never said anything really about a deep playoff run. It was more about, like, we'll see how these guys are. Yeah. And I think, we, I think we all saw that he... Carry that um that Cleveland team for like the past two years. And we we're like, oh, okay, he's a he he might be to go and without remembering like as bad as we think that team was. That's not that's not even close to the worst team he's ever been on, and that team if you gutted out the best players. Well, if you take LeBron from mm. either one of those teams and let last year's Cleveland team play against this year's Lakers team, I think um, I think last year's Cleveland team would win. Without LeBron? Yeah. Mm, with Kyrie, Kevin Love, that, that is a solid team. Okay. I mean, I, I don't, Kyrie was on the team last year. Oh, uh, no, nah, I don't think I don't think so. I mean, I think the reason why they're just so bad is because they're so it's it's just so dysfunctional. 
and LeBron James has to have certain players around him. You notice when he has shooters, you know, it's more efficient and he has more he has too many ball handlers and LeBron wants the ball and that takes away from the guy's development and you know, that's what I think. <clears throat> What's going on with the Lakers right now? I they, so yeah, basically the thing with LeBron is he's for a very long time and arguably justifiably so he's got he's gotten very used to a world, a system, whatever you want to call it, that revolves around him. Yeah. And he necessarily can't really have that in LA, or at least he should have known going in he wasn't necessarily going to have that. And the thing is, once he leaves whatever situation that that is Cleveland or Miami or wherever, that team is trash and it's the only function of his money. Stop that. As yeah, I do. Yeah. All in the microphone, big fella. All right. Go ahead, Calvin. But, yeah, it's like LeBron is used to a team being, um, okay, I'm going to say this, not built around him, but built for him. And those teams have been fairly successful, mind you. But it's not really a way to develop good talent around him or something that's going to be something that's going to have longevity. Yeah. Yeah. I also don't I think you can get some more ball handlers around LeBron. You just have to have really they have to be really good playmakers. And no. they also have to do they also have to do more than just be able to pass the ball. Like no. Lonzo can't do anything on the offensive end. At least not anything that you want him to outside of catch the occasional alley oop. Uh, Rondo's definitely not that person most of the time. Um, Brandon Ingram, if he continues, again, prayers go out to Brandon Ingram. I hope that clears up. Uh, thumb, thumb process. I've never said, said that word before, but I heard it a million times. Hope that clears up for him. But uh, if we can, if we can see twenty-two point per game, Brandon Ingram. I think he's he's a pretty good fit in uh Kyle Kuzma just become a better shooter and uh that's probably not gonna be a playoff team next year still, but uh that's a that's a six, seven, eight seed at best. Yeah, especially if they pick somebody up this free agent. But I, I don't know if anybody. I mean, it's just been so much dysfunction going on in LA, and then uh, I don't think they have the ability to attract a star. Not just because of the hospitality, but mainly because it's just dysfunctional there with the GMs and Genie Bus, Magic, Rob Palenka, Magic Johnson not on the same page when it comes to uh, finding out personnel and stuff like that. It's just a lot. <clears throat> it's just a lot, man. By the way, LA is not dysfunctional. The Lakers are dysfunctional because the Clippers are damn decent. Oh yeah, they're yeah, they're solid. I, I like the Clippers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that other team, that other team, the Staples Center, them, them boys, them boys, but they. <laughs> Do the Lakers have their own pick this year? I think yeah. so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And, uh, yeah. yeah. Before we get up out of here, shout out to the Dallas Mavericks for letting me cover a game with them on Saturday. And shout out to Dirk for passing up Will Chamberlain on the all time record today. In very Dirk. Fashion near fade away from the top of the key. Good bucket, bro. All right. 
But if that's everything for you guys, let's go ahead and get out of here. Calvin, bring us home. All right, y'all. Um, you know, thank you for listening. Um, again, I'm Calvin McGowan. Follow me on Twitter. It's Steve McGowan II. Um, I will be using it for the duration of March Madness. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Hey, it's uh, Levi Washington. Uh, of course, we're fourth quarter legends. And you can follow me on Twitter at at fourth quarter legends uh, with a Z at the end. So let's get it. All right. And hopefully you guys will be live tweeting with me during these games. So I'm tired of being out here in the Twitter world by myself. It is how about very- you? How about you at me so I can see? Bro, I gotta, you. I gotta at you. Yeah, just one time. You lame. You just lame. one time. I, I've added you before. You ignored me, bro. This is why we. This is why we do the podcast. This is the only way I can force you to come talk to me. Um, <laughs> I'm a busy um, man, man. I'm a busy man. What can I say, man? I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. Forgive I remember me. when our friendship meant something. Uh, it still does. And don't forget that. <laughs> you make me cry. Stop. <laughs> um, but on the real, let's go ahead and get out of here. Again, my name is Alan Pettigrew. Thank you for tuning in to the Traveling Hoopers. You can find us on Twitter at Traveling Hooper. You can follow me at AP Rights with two S's. Yes, I changed my at. I had to because... I was trying to be professional this weekend. Can't be out here being known as AP the Great <laughs> until I am great. Um, trust me, I'm changing that back whenever I get the chance. Um, but yeah, also check us out on YouTube. Uh, we should. I still have some coverage of the Texas regional final um, that I am going to be chopping up pretty soon. And later in April, I believe, on the 13th and 14th, I am going to a big AAU event out here. So uh, be looking out for that content. And I am still going to try to get some uh, interviews with some of Dallas area's top high school basketball talent. And, of course, some big names and faces down here. With that being said, uh Follow me so you can catch all my work. Uh, do like three articles a week now because I'm lazy. But um, thank you and good night. Good night. <laughs>